All right, welcome back to Make It Mental, everybody. Today I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step procedure of hooking up the Dayton Audio Bluetooth amplifier board. So this is what you want to identify in this joker right here. It's going to have a big round circle on it. This is your amplifier board. Identify this four-pronged outlet. This is going to be your very last connection. Identify it right now. Then identify the wire focus that connects to that. And that's a four-pronged connector. That's your speaker connection. And just set it aside because that is going to be your last connection. This is your crossover network for your input, for your woofer, for your tweeter. Find this connector right here and remove it because you're not going to use it. It connects nowhere on the amplifier board. This is going to connect to the speaker wires that I just showed you, the two black wires. On here, if you carefully look, see this one here? W is for the woofer. That small T over there to the left hand side of your screen is it for the tweeter. Right? So the woofer, tweeter, and your input. I'm going to reduce that again. So set that, cut the connector off. Maybe you want to leave enough of the connector to use for something else. If you're a hobbyist like I am, these always come in handy for other things. But if you're if you're just interested in building a speaker, cut the fucking thing off as close as you can to the connector to leave the extra wire. Next, you want to identify your LEDs. This particular one happens to be red, as identified with the red wire. This one happens to be green, as identified with the green wire. This one happens to be blue, as identified with the blue wire. Now, typically, what I would do is I would associate the blue wire with the Bluetooth. That's what I would do. Whether you use red for power or red for charging, it really doesn't make any difference or vice versa, but I definitely use the blue wire for Bluetooth. That's a commonly accepted practice. So the next thing I would do is set that aside. And as you can see, I've already separated this guy right here, and you do that simply by pulling out the LED and then mount it to your cabinet. And there is a supplied wrench that comes with the kit. This little joker right here, once you've tightened this finger tight, I would slide that on there and give it about a quarter of a turn. I mean, it's, it's small stuff. It's made out of aluminum, so it's not going to take a lot of strength, a lot of tightening. If you think you have to get out your four-foot breaker bar, you're wrong. So as you can see, I've already installed a couple of these. We're just going to go ahead and unthread this right here. And you don't need to see that. These parts are quite small in my opinion. And I got pretty fat fingers. Gently thread that on and back it up till it feels flat and then spin it on. Tight with the fingers. And then give it a good quarter of a turn, maybe a little bit more if it feels loose. So just till it feels nice and snug. And it's, it's just holding in a light, right? And I'm going to identify the blue wire. I know the blue wire goes in the middle because it's Bluetooth. So I'm just going to slide that in there. You can put a drop of hot glue or super glue or something in there. And then it really doesn't matter on the next two. I got a, oops, that was a green one. I'll put the green one, that one. I'll put the blue one there. There we go, something like that. And then I got a red one over here. Let's see if I can make that smaller. It really doesn't matter where you put the red one or the green one. All right, 
it's all your choice. You want red for power or green for power, that's your choice. You want red or green for charging, it's your choice. But I definitely associate blue wire with Bluetooth. Now in your kit, you're going to get what looks like two LEDs that are green, but they are slightly different. And as you move that out of the way, and you can see they are slightly different. These are binding. These are actually a momentary switch. Both of them, I do not know why they're supplied. I have never used them in my previous build, but they are supplied and they go in the pairing. You'll have one extra for whatever reason. Set one aside. You do not need it. You put it in a pairing port. And as you can see, you fish your wire through the front side and then you put your washer on and then we're going to just gently thread on this nut right here if we can get it started nice and flat no need to watch all that waste of time okay that's installed now the next obvious thing is going to be our on off switch identify that big joker here all right that's our on off switch we're going to put it in whether you want which way you want it to be on, which way or which direction of you want it to be in, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because there is a third slot. So you got a little tiny one there, one big one there, one big one down here. Hard to see, but there they are. So you're just going to push that in, line it up. Sorry, the lighting is not the best. And it is kind of a tight fit on this one. But once you get it started, you might have to use two thumbs like I'm doing. And there we go. Man, so we got a nice, tight, flat fit. So, there's that. Next, I'll do the, the charging port. Charging port can be misidentified at first glance for your auxiliary input. The one on my right hand right here is your auxiliary input, which would normally be like a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And this one here with a little dick in the middle of it here is your uh, charging port. So this is your 12 volt to 24 volt input. And this is your auxiliary input identify them and then install them in accordance to what the plate says. Now one thing that taken a note on your auxiliary input is this is plastic. Only go finger tight. Don't grab any pair of pliers or any kind of tool. Just whatever you can tighten this ring with with your fingers only. And if you have to use a little drop of glue of some sort to help hold it in place if you feel like it's necessary but I didn't on my first one and I'm not going to on my second one so this is auxiliary input this is the last one to go in there finger tight in the auxiliary input now your last hole to be open is your volume and that's this guy right here and pull off the knob it may take a little bit of work pull off the knob remove the nut Insert it through the back side, reinsert the nut into that opening right there. Now, all the ones that come with a nut, I go ahead and at least turn them a quarter turn or better, depending on how strong your fingers are. But not too much, just enough to where it feels nice and snug, or maybe your wrench slips off like that. I would call it good. A little cross section right there. There is a little cross section somewhere in there. It may not be identified in here, but. Just gently slide it on there until it feels like it, it fits on there and then push it on to where it's nice and flat, like so. And then there's our volume. You might have to pull it off. That's our volume minimum and our volume maximum. This went all the way around past, so we're going to pull it off and we're going to readjust it. And start off on volume minimum, like so, and then check it again. Yeah, so we're okay. At least we got volume minimum. 
there's zero. So it goes a little bit past, and that's okay. Nobody's going to care. But about nine, if you go past 90% volume, it starts getting the distortion mode anyway. So now you're going to be looking at a whole clusterfuck full of wires, right? You're going to be uh, confused. Don't let them confuse you. Just take it step by step. And you'll notice with this volume connector, we've got a very big connector right here. You're going to identify it, line it up, and plug it in. It can only go in one way. I mean, you see the two little nipples up there by the top of this finger right here? It may be hard to identify. Come on, focus. But there is two little nipples right at the top up here, up in this area. They only slide in to a certain way on this board right here. And you have to identify which direction that is. And then the other option is, you can see that the pins way down here are up higher on one side than they are on the other. And the same in this area here. The pins are on one side or the other. Right, it's highly magnified. So just take your time and line everything up. If it doesn't fit one way, gently remove it and try putting it in the other way. Something like that. Now find your box that says uh, Dayton Audio Lithium Battery Extension Board for Bluetooth Amplifier Boards. That's this guy right here. I've already pulled the contents out. I'm going to find this package. I'm going to find a set of wires. And then, I don't remember where this is located, but this is your Bluetooth receiver, so locate that as well. And then we're going to go step by step up according to the instruction manual and work ourselves around in a in some sort of orderly fashion. You'll notice that there is one, two, three battery connections. I'm guessing you can probably add multiple batteries if you wanted to, but we're just gonna find a port. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters. It didn't seem to matter last time, but I'm gonna pick the one that's all by itself. You can see there's a little high spot right up in there. And then that's going to account for those two little ridges right there. We're just going to go ahead and plug it in. And then we're going to grab our amplifier board and the instruction booklet. Now on your instructions, so my phone is at a severe angle here. Your speaker cable, ignore that. Your power cable, ignore that, and we're going to go straight to the Bluetooth power pairing ca control cable, right, which is the green one. So I've identified that right here, which is, happens to be this lead right here, and it's number three on here, right, which happens to be corresponding on this board to right there. So we find that location on this board and we're just going to simply plug it in. Right. So there's one down. Now we're just going to work ourselves around the board here. Now number six is going to tell you your volume control with cable, right? And it's going to show you that it goes right there on the top of the board which is this location right here, which means you got to pull that pin out right there. So there it is. I removed it with a pair of pliers. I'm going to identify the proper location of our plug, and we're going to plug that in right there. Make sure it's tight. Make sure this one's tight. And I'm just going to continue on working 
around the board in an orderly fashion. And again, we're going to use this one for last. I'll continue the rest of the connections. I think I showed you enough to get you started. I'll continue the rest and then we'll get back to something more important. Number seven is your battery cable. I'm not going to show you the instructions all the time. So you, this is the this is the battery board with the battery cable already attached. And it's going to go in the next receptacle in here. So that's what you should be looking like so far. I'm going to skip this one. This one is not necessary. And we'll continue on. Number eight is the on off. And again, just line up the shape to the shape on your board. Sorry if the camera view is not that good. I normally don't do live stuff. I don't have video editing. And I don't think I'll ever mess with video editing. It's, I don't want somebody to have to scroll through 45 minutes of video just to find the one piece of information they're looking for. Besides that, who sits down and watches a 45 minute video unless they're uh, watching a movie? So now we move to the next slide. Number 14, you're going to skip as well. It's for future expansion. Whatever that means, they do not provide documentation on what that means or what it's for. So we're going to skip number 14 as well. Number 9, we're going to locate the power LED wire leads and we're going to plug them into the circuit board here. It's going to be down here on the bottom side. I know it seems really big, but we're going to plug them into the bottom side right down here. So that's what it should basically look like as of right now. I went ahead and proceeded with the next step first because you have to actually skip a couple of pins right down here. You actually skip a couple of them to put in your power. And the next one up is your volume. So that's how that's going to look for right now. So that's 9 and 5 and 9 and five according to the instruction manual. Now step number 11 is your charging LED. We're going to locate that, find a little uh, raised area there, and we're going to stick it in the corresponding spot on there. Don't let everything confuse you. Just take everything nice and slow. You can always hit pause, rewind, and go back to it again. And then your last LED is going to go into step number 10, which is right there. And that's going to be your Bluetooth, which is the blue wire. Everybody should be associated with that, or at least most everybody in the entire world should be associated blue with Bluetooth. So there's your very simple connections. Let me back this out a little bit. So now we have a, a very big mess. We got our plate, we got our amplifier board, we got our battery box. Sorry, I can't zoom out any more than what it is. That's the gist of it. Now we're going to put some standoffs in there, and I'll probably make part two to that.